Now we're going to focus on Boolean functions that are linear. The definition of linearity is that a function f is said to be linear if f of x plus y is the same as f of x plus f of y and f of alpha times x is the same as alpha times f of x. This can also be phrased as that the sum of the argument gives the same as the sum of the functions and also that multiplying the argument with a scalar is the same as multiplying the function with the scalar. So let us show two small examples of this. So we're going to have that x is two variables x1 and x2. So we're going to use the function f of x equals x1 x2. So now we have that f of x plus y will be equal to x1 plus y1 times x2 plus y2 which is equal x1 y1 plus x1 y2 plus y1 x2 plus y1 y2 2. And also we have that f of x plus f of y. This would equal x1 x2 plus y1 y2. And here we can see that these two are not the same, so it cannot be linear. But just for completeness, let us also check f of alpha x which is alpha x1 times alpha x2, which is the same as alpha squared x1 x2. And alpha times f of x would be equal to alpha x1 x2. So also these two are not the same, so the function cannot be linear. So let us take another example. Here we will use the function f of x equals x1, x or x2. So f of x plus y in this case would be equal to x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2. And f of x plus f of y would be equal to x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2. And clearly these two are the same. So let us check for the other property that must hold. Here we have that f of alpha x equals alpha x1 plus alpha x2. And we have that alpha times f of x equals alpha times x1 plus x2 which equals alpha x1 plus alpha x2. And also we can see that these two are the same. So from this we can conclude that this function here is a linear function while this function here is not a linear function. We can generalize this with the following theorem so a Boolean function is linear if and only if it can be written as f of x equals the sum of ai times xi, where i goes from 1 to n, which can also be written as the multiplication of a row vector consisting of our a's and a column vector consisting of our x's. And we can write this in this form, a times x where all the ai is 0 or 1. And from this it also follows that any linear Boolean function can be realized with an n input modulo 2 adder. So from this we can say that a combinational circuit that contains only modulo 2 adders, that circuit realizes a linear Boolean function. And we can also say that a linear Boolean function 
can be implemented with only using a set of modulo 2 adders. This gives us a linearity test for our boolean function. So we have previously seen the form that we called the ring sum expansion or the reed muller canonical form or what we also call it the algebraic normal form. Writing our boolean function in this form means that we write the boolean function only with our ring operations addition modulo 2 and multiplication modulo 2 instead of using our boolean algebra operations that we call OR, AND and NOT. Using this canonical form we write the function f of x and we have a function now with n variables so this will be a sum of all possible combinations of up to n variables with the constant either 0 or 1 for each of these terms. And since there are 2 to the n different terms, we have 2 to the n different indices for our a here. So the last one will be 2 to the n minus 1, while the first one is a0. Now we have the case that for a linear Boolean function, all the ai's will be 0, where i equals 0 and i is larger than n. So if this is the case, our Boolean function can be written in this form instead. And this is our linear function. So this ring sum expansion or read muller canonical form that we denote RSA and RMF respectively, this can be derived in several ways. So one way is to use the definition of the Boolean operations, which means that we replace all A and B by A times B, and we, we replace all a or b with a plus b plus a b and we replace all a prime that is the complement of a with one plus a. Another way of deriving this expression is to use the Morgan's law to get rid of all our or terms and then we use the fact that a prime equals one plus a. The third variant that we can use is to write the function in the disjunctive normal form and then after that we use the fact that the OR of two of our min terms will be the same as the sum of these two min terms in our Boolean ring. Because when we multiply two min terms we will always have zero. And then for each of these min terms that we now sum together we will again use the fact that A prime equals 1 plus A. And finally, this normal form can be derived using the Reed-Muller transform. But this is not, not anything that we're going to look at in detail in this course. If you want to see explicit examples of how to do these three first ways of deriving the RSE or the RMF for the Boolean function, then I suggest you go back to the video where we discussed the Reed-Muller canonical form.